Well, Harianto, I think it's accurate to say that both of us watch most of our movies and TV series on, you know, over the top streaming services like Netflix. So my question to you today is, do you actually own a pay TV subscription? I used to with uh, StarHub and then after that I stopped because right now, you know, I'm on Netflix, yeah. I'm on YouTube and uh, I guess whatever I want to watch, I could just Google as well. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I have StarHub, but it's really only for sports or my kids' programs. Well, I think the majority of the population is kind of, you know, like similar to our situation because, you know, earlier this month, market research firm Fitch Solutions forecast that by the end of 2029, there would be about 460,000 paid TV subscribers. For context, at the peak in March 2015, there were 968,000 subscriptions. For OTT services, while Netflix doesn't reveal subscriber numbers in Singapore, market researcher Statista estimates that there will be over 264,000 users here by the end of this year. Tech correspondent Vincent Chung has a story on this topic today and he joins us now to discuss what pay TV operators can do to prevent viewers like me from pulling the plug. But first, Vincent, why are people still subscribing to pay TV? Well, I think as I was talking to one of the experts, um, he was mentioning that um, there's an aging population here that, that grew up on uh, cable TV and media corp shows. And to them, the, the pay TV model is something they're familiar that they use the channels and the interface. So, I mean, we are all, all creatures of habits after all. And that's one reason why they're, they're, they're keeping the subscription. Another is uh, probably the Asian content. There's a wider selection of uh, Asian shows, like, you know, from Japan, Korea, or even around, around us, um, through the pay TV operators, then through OTT services. Now, there were, while there are also uh, OTT streaming services uh, like View, or TVB anywhere that, that offer such content. Um, they, they, they are specific to certain regions like, you know, Koreans when they, Korean shows when they, or, or Hong Kong dramas when they, yeah. And the last reason is probably the, uh, the for, for subscribers uh, is uh, uh, live sports. For instance, in Singapore, the English Premier League is uh, very popular and um, many subscribers just keep their subscriptions because of a uh, because of the access to uh, live sports that you can't get on OTT services. Right. So to keep up with uh, competition and changing consumer habits, uh, what can pay TV do? They have evolved in a sense. So for instance, uh, Singtel has uh, their cast OTT platform, which uh, offers some of the benefits of uh, OTT streaming services. And the new uh, Singtel Starhub, uh, I mean the Starhub TV Plus uh, app does the same thing. So you can watch it on mobile, you can you know, you'll remember where you last watched and you can watch it, you can stream the, the, the content to, to a smart TV and they even have an Android TV box uh, that you can rent from and then you can get the same, you can get your live, um, you know, your usual pay TV content along with uh, some OTT operators that they've integrated in, in, in this app. So for instance, uh, Netflix is inside uh, as part of this uh, platform. Hmm. And uh, that, that last approach actually, actually is uh, how some of the experts think pay TV operators can, can become, as in they can become an aggregator of content. So like um, they curate various uh, OTT services and put them all on one platform so it's easier for, for users to access them rather than having to like, have multiple apps and, and multiple billing arrangements. They can all get it all through one, one provider in that sense. Yeah, so um, this this could be uh, this could be important going forward because of the number of OTT players yeah. coming in. I mean we are all familiar with Netflix and now we have Apple T V Plus and Amazon Prime Video. They're all uh, all competing in this space. And there's more to come. Disney Plus is expected to launch here sometime, I don't know, going ahead. And then we have um, there are also the Chinese OTT players. Your ITE, yeah, they are all, they all expanding outside China. So eventually they'll come here and then users will have so many OTT apps, right? And you know, um, for some for some users it might be they might be more comfortable going through a familiar name like you know, Starhub. 
rather than you know, subscribing to like 10 of them. Thanks, Vincent, for coming on to the show to speak with us. We were speaking to tech correspondent at The Straits Times, Vincent Chang.